Hello, beloved. Have you ever dreamt of falling? Maybe there's an area in your life where you're feeling out of control. Have you ever dreamt of your teeth falling out? Maybe you're not grasping something that God is trying to show you. Have you ever dreamt of your wisdom teeth falling out? Maybe you're not applying the wisdom of God to a certain circumstance in your life. Have you ever dreamt of dying or seeing someone die? Maybe it's a literal death, but maybe, just maybe, it's the death of something or a circumstance. Perhaps the death of a job, the death of an idea, the death of a relationship, the death of a project that you are working on. Have you ever dreamt of being naked? Maybe God is trying to show you that you feel exposed or insecure in a certain area. Maybe God is trying to show you that you're feeling ashamed in a certain area. Or maybe God is telling you that you need to be more open or more transparent. Have you ever dreamt of using the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, or taking a shower? Maybe God is speaking to you, beloved, and showing you that there's an aspect of your life where you need cleansing or deliverance. Beloved, I want to welcome you back to today's program. My name is Chelsea. I am a disciple and a lover of Jesus Christ and a prophetic teacher in the body of Christ. I am so excited to be here with you today. We are going to pick up where we left off last week in talking about dreams. But today we are going to get into the good stuff. We're going to get into the interpretation of dreams. Beloved, today I'm going to be teaching from my book, The Sound of God, My Sheep Hear My Voice. We're going to go over some principles about dream interpretation and some things which God has given me here for today. But uh, I never like to talk about dreams without paying honor to my beloved, the late and the great John Paul Jackson. So much of what I've learned concerning dreams, so much of what I've learned about my prophetic walk has come by way of John Paul Jackson. His ministry has been a source of blessing to me for at least the last 15 or so years, maybe 20 years, but I want to pay homage to him today because he has been so impactful in my life. He's been a godsend in times when I didn't know what to do, when I didn't know who or what I was. He was there by way of his ministry to get me to where I am here today. Beloved, we're going to talk about dream interpretation. I'm so passionate about this. So if I go on and on, if I mumble, please forgive me. I'm just so excited. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. And that is because dreams are about the relationship that God wants to have with you. God gives us dreams because he loves us. You know, beloved, I am a really, really romantic person. I love all things romance. I love romance. But do you know who the most romantic person is that I know? Well, I'll tell you that it's not Jason Morgan. It's not Alan Quartermain. It's not Luke Spencer. It's not Aiden Turner either. The most romantic person I know is Jesus. Jesus is trying to romance you. He gives you dreams because he's inviting you into his world. He's inviting you into a relationship with you, with him. He's inviting you into fellowship with him. He gives you dreams because he wants to, in essence, flash you and then have you come after him. You see, beloved, God will reveal something to you in a dream, something that's enticing or something that makes you curious because he's flashing you. He's giving you a little exposure into the supernatural so that he'll close the curtain after that. Once you've seen a little peek, he'll close the curtain and he wants you to come after him. He pursues you, but just like with a romantic relationship here on earth, when someone pursues you, they're not going to pursue you forever and ever and ever. When they pursue you, they want some encouragement that you're interested. They want to see you come back towards them to some degree so that they can continue the pursuit. So Jesus is pursuing you today, beloved, through your dreams. So as we're getting started here, I want to talk just a little bit more about how the Lord pursues you in dreams. He pursues you for the purpose of an, inter an eternal relationship. He wants to romance you through dreams because he wants to have that romantic language with you. I don't know if 
you're married, if you're watching me today, if you're married or you're single, I'm pretty sure you've had some type of romantic interaction with someone. Well, when you're in a romantic relationship and you have true intimacy with that person, that person can look at you or do a certain something with their bottom lip or top lip and you just, you know that cue, you know that when this person does this, it means this. When they raise their eyebrow, it means this. When they maybe small down, it means they're feeling threatened or insecure about something. When they pipe up, when their eyes open up, you know they're excited about something. When a person is just sitting in silence, you know that there's something going on with them and you know what it is because you're intimately intertwined with that person. You understand the way that they speak. You understand their nonverbal and their verbal cues. You understand the visual cues. That's the way God wants to take you into a place of intimacy with him through your dreams so that you will understand when he's showing you this, this means this. When he gives you this, it means come yonder, come up yonder, come up higher. I want to be with you. I want to talk to you. When he gives you this in a dream, you know that maybe for someone else it means this, but it means this to you. For someone else, a raised eyebrow may mean that they're bored or they're feeling just completely out of whack with whatever you're saying. But for someone else who you're more intimate with, a raised eyebrow may mean, come over here, let's do this, let's get it on. So, you know, that's how God wants to speak to you. That's how God wants to be intimate with you today and every day. And he does that through the word of God, of course, but through dreams, because it's a language that's just between you and him. While there are some universal signs, like we all know in the world that we live in, that a kiss is generally something romantic, God may want to take you into a deeper place where he's showing you that when he shows you this type of kiss, it means this. When it's this type of kiss, it means that. So let's take a look at the word of God here today. I want to start off by reading Acts 2.17, which is quoting Joel 2.28. And it says this in Acts 2.17, and I think we'll read all the way down to 18. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And verse 18 says this, And on my servants and on my maidservants, ladies, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So in essence, what God is saying here, in Acts 2.17, it's a quotation from Joel 2.28, is that in the last days that we're living in, he's going to pour out more of his spirit upon us so that we may interact with him in the spiritual realm through dreams and through visions and, and, and through that interaction in that secret place in the spiritual realm while we sleep and even while we're awake, his spirit is gonna be upon us to interact with him in the supernatural. I don't know about you, but that is very exciting for me. So beloved, this happens, this pouring out of the spirit, it increases through maturity, spiritual maturity. You know that you're spiritually mature when you have a heart after God. It's about God. You want to be in that place with God. You don't want dreams just so that you can put something up and say, look at me, look at me, everybody. Or you don't want dreams just to have them to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do for my life but you want to experience dreams because you want to experience God. You understand that when you're in a dream, you're interacting in the spiritual realm and you want that interaction to be with God. Now, if you have not already watched last week's program, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to that because last week I shared about the three sources of dreams. Dreams come from your soul. They can come from your soul. They can come from Satan or they can come from God. We want to focus on those dreams from God. I also spoke about the categories or at least some of them. There are at least 20 or more, but I spoke about the main categories of dreams. Some of them are for encouragement. Some of them are for cleansing or deliverance. Some of them are to impart gifts into you. Some of them are for comfort. Some of them are for correction. Some of them are for warning. So go back and take a listen to last week's program so that you can get that foundation. Let's journey a little bit deeper here. Now I want to talk about the dream interpretation process. When you have a dream, it's important to know that the same person who gives you a dream, that person is Jesus. Jesus is God in person. The same person who gives you a dream is the same person who can interpret the dream. 
So all dream interpretation, all correct dream interpretation comes from God. That's who we should be seeking as our source for interpretation of our dreams. Now, when the interpretation is happening, it can happen in various different ways. Sometimes your dream may be interpreted as you're dreaming it. I've had those experiences where I'm in the dream and I know that I'm dreaming and I know what God is telling me. At other times, I'm not aware that I'm dreaming, but as soon as I wake up, I understand the interpretation of the dream. I know what God was trying to tell me through the dream. You're going to have those times as well as you'll have times where you wake up and you don't understand the dream, but as you pick your pen up and you begin to record the dream, God will give you the interpretation then. We see that with Jeremiah. He wrote down what God was speaking to him, and as he wrote it down, the understanding, the interpretation came about. You'll also have those times when pursuing the interpretation of the dream is a process that God wants to take you on. As you're praying through, God, I saw this and I don't understand it. Lord, tell me what it is that you're trying to speak to me. Show me, God, show me in the word. Show me, God, speak to me. Speak to me through the still small voice. Speak to me what you're trying to show me. God may not show you right away. He may want to take you on a journey and that journey could be a matter of minutes. It could be a matter of hours, weeks, days, years, decades, because there's a process. There was a dream that I had where I kept praying for understanding because it was a reoccurring dream. And I didn't understand it for at least three years because God was taking me through a process of surrender, through a process of seeking, through a process of increasing my time in the secret place with him. So the interpretation may be prolonged because through getting the interpretation, God is taking you through a process for your learning. There's also sometimes when the dream comes years later because when you get the dream and until you get the interpretation, you were not yet ready. As an example, I just spoke about a dream I had. It was a reoccurring dream. I dreamt this dream like four or five times uh, and I didn't quite understand the interpretation. And when God finally gave me the interpretation, it was because I was at a place of spiritual maturity so that I could take in what God was trying to tell me. The dream was this. I dreamt many, many years ago, and there was this gentleman who I was considering accepting his marriage proposal. I dreamt that I was in my home and, or in a home, and the gentleman came to the door unexpectedly. So I was glad that the gentleman showed up at the door, but I was not ready to receive that gentleman yet because my house wasn't clean. There were things all over the floor of my house, particularly in my bedroom. There were things all over the floor of my bedroom. So I was running, trying to clean up my bedroom because I knew that uh, the gentleman was coming in. I was going to let him in eventually. So I was running, trying to clean up the articles that were on the floor of my bedroom before the gentleman came in. Now I did eventually get those articles cleaned up off of the floor, but it took a little bit of time to get it done. And then once I did, the gentleman came and got me and he took me to a new life. At the time I didn't quite understand because God had made it clear to me that that was not the gentleman who I was supposed to marry. So I didn't understand why I was having these reoccurring dreams. They kept reoccurring because I was not grasping what God was telling me. And they also continued to reoccur because God wanted to take me through a process of learning before he gave me that interpretation. The actual interpretation is this, beloved. The man represented Jesus, not the man himself, the person who I was considering marrying, but Jesus. Jesus was the man. He was coming to get me, but I was not ready yet to go with him because there were some things in my house. My house represented me and particularly in my bedroom. My bedroom represented the private parts of me that were not in order, some things that needed to be cleaned up. And actually the home that I was in was my childhood home. So that was showing me that those things that needed to be cleaned up had stemmed back to childhood. But once I got those things cleaned up, it was a process. Once I got all of those things cleaned up, then Jesus would come and take me to a higher level. He was already there because the man in the dream was already there. Jesus was already in my life, 
But once I got everything cleaned up, once I went through that process, he would begin to come and take me to a new place and take me higher. Now, it took years to get to that understanding because I was not yet ready to receive that. So I said all of that to say what I just said here, that sometimes the dream interpretation may not come until you're ready. Sometimes it may delay over a period of years because God wants you to learn something through the process of seeking Him for the interpretation. Also, beloved, sometimes the interpretation of your dreams will not come until after an event that God showed you in your dreams actually takes place. In 2019, God gave me a dream concerning the 2020 U.S. election as well as COVID-19. I did not understand either one of them right away. Then eventually God gave me the interpretation for the 2020 U.S. election. And then later on, after COVID-19 broke out and became a thing, then God showed me, connected the dots to show me that that's what the dream was about. So we've got that. Now let's move on to the application of interpretation. The Holy Spirit, as I mentioned, is the person who interprets dreams. He is the interpreter of all dreams when they're correctly interpreted. You never want to go after a dream interpretation by yourself. You never want to isolate yourself and not include the Holy Spirit in your dream interpretation because you're going to come up with the wrong thing or you're going to miss something. If he's the one who gives it to you, he's the one who knows how to give you the correct answer. So the Holy Spirit interprets dreams. We see that in the book of Genesis where Joseph is brought before Pharaoh and before those two prisoners, the baker and the butler and the cupbearer who were in prison with him, who had dreams that were disturbing to them. Joseph told them that I'm not the one who interprets, it's God who gives the interpretation. We see that with Daniel. Daniel said it's God who interprets dreams. Like, I don't know what the interpretation is, but God will tell it to me. So the Holy Spirit is the one who interprets dreams. And secondly, in partnership, you are the very best person to interpret your dream with the Holy Spirit. You may not be seasoned right now, but I may help you with a dream interpretation. Someone else may help you with a, with a dream interpretation. But if you're getting the accurate interpretation, it should come through us by way of the Holy Spirit. But once you hear it, there should be something on the inside of you that goes off to say, yes, I think this is it. Even if you're not ready to accept it, there should be a nudging in your spirit man to let you know that there's something about this interpretation that I really need to ponder on. And the reason again being is that we're all different individuals. We are all God's children, yes, but God has different relationships with each and every one of us that look different. There may be some similarities, but there's a difference. Even as believers, even as a family or a company of believers, God's relationship with you looks differently than God's relationship with me. So you are the very best person to partner with the Holy Spirit for an interpretation of your dreams. Now with dream interpretation, there really are no fixed rules. I'm gonna go over some principles with you today, some that I've learned through the ministry of John Paul Jackson, as well as a lot that the Holy Spirit has given me personally. So I'm gonna share my process with you. I'm gonna share some principles and some patterns that have been proven, some things that have been extracted from the scripture, but there's no absolute when it comes to dream interpretation. And that is because God may speak about something this time, like he may show you a, a, a finger or a hand this time, and it means this, but then when he shows it to you in this dream again, it means that, or a finger for me may mean something, and a finger for you may mean something else. So God, he, he's creative and he changes. He's not stale or boring. He likes to mix things up, but more so he wants you to know him. He's inviting you to understand him in some degree. So here's the other thing, beloved. While I do base my process of interpreting dreams on the Bible and all the training and the teaching that I've gone through have solely come from the Bible. We pull symbols and uh, patterns and principles from the Bible. We look to the Bible as our source, not some secular dream interpreter, not some secular dream book. We look to the Bible as a first source. 
while that is true, the Bible is our foundation. We go to the Bible along with the Holy Spirit for dream interpretation. Everything concerning your dream is not going to be found in the Bible. You're not going to find every symbol in the Bible. You're not going to find every code to interpret your dream in the Bible. God wants you to partner with the Holy Spirit to give it to you. That's just like you're not going to find in the Bible who you should marry. You're not going to find in the Bible what house to buy. But God will speak to you through principles in the Bible. He'll speak to you through revelation directly, through the Holy Spirit, in a dream, through the still small voice, through your prayer time, just hearing God speak to you in whatever way He does. It's the same thing with interpreting dreams. You're not going to find every single uh, dream symbol or every single interpretation in the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit working with us. So when you're interpreting your dreams, you defer to the Holy Spirit and the Word and know that the Holy Spirit will lead you as to what path to take for the interpretation. Now, as I mentioned, you'll see some things that are not in the Bible that I'll probably mention here today, such as some principles and patterns. Like when it comes to colors, I know for me that revelation is often presented to me in the color blue. Now, this comes from some teaching. If you go back to the scriptures and, and really study, you'll see that uh, there are different colors which God tells Moses to put on the uh, the, the Urim and the Thunum, what he, what he tells him to put on the ephod. And, and when he goes to the different colors to put this and this color and put this tassel here and this color. So you can find certain things in the Bible that do denote revelation. But there are certain times when God is not speaking to me with the color blue, meaning revelation, but he's speaking to me with the color blue, showing me my favorite thing, something that I'm going to like because blue is my favorite color. So because I've spent time journeying with God, because I've spent time in prayer, I understand that sometimes when God shows me blue, yes, it means revelation or prophetic word or something prophetic, but sometimes it means something that I love, something that I will favor or favor that will come upon me. So we've got the principles. Now, in terms of symbols, when you're interpreting again, the symbols can come from the Bible. A lot of them do, and that's where we should look first. But you need to develop your own dream catalog, your own dream dictionary with the Lord. It's very important to have your own because not everything is going to fit into this little box of what we call Christian dream interpretation. Not every person is going to always get it right. No one will always get it right, including myself. No one knows everything, including myself. Today's program will not be exhaustive. I'm probably going to be here for a bit. I'm going to share some things with you, but I'm not going to be able to tell you everything. Number one, because I don't know everything. I don't even know close to everything. Number two, I don't have enough time. But most importantly, God wants to be the one to tell you. God wants to be the one to help you with your dream interpretation. Another thing that we need to keep in mind when it comes to the application of interpretation is cultural norms. People are different. People think differently. I am a citizen of the United States of America. We have different cultural norms here in the United States of America. We share some with North America in its entirety. We share some cultural norms with Canada, but even between the two countries in the, on the same continent, there's still some things that are different. There's some things that are going to be different from me to you who may be watching me in Africa or some other place around the world. One of our cultural norms here in the US is a thumbs up or a high five. For me, for us, a thumbs up is good, congratulations, or yeah, it's a go, it's a yes, good job, yes, I like it. For someone else, somewhere else, that may be something else. A thumbs up may mean nothing to them. A thumbs up may not be anything that's positive. A high five may mean something great to me, and it does in America, high five is like, good job, or let's do this. But somewhere else, that may be seen as being silly or something disrespectful or something out of the norm. 
So as you're interpreting a dream or as you try to help someone else, you have to keep those things into consideration that what something means here, my cultural norm here in the US may not necessarily be a cultural norm in your country. And God is giving you the dream. So he's speaking to you about things that you are familiar with. You know, beloved, even in hearing the voice of God outside of dreams, God uses the things that you know. As an example, if in your imagination, in your imagination, you see God as this big, massive, tall man with white hair and a white beard and this robe that's glowing. If you see Jesus as this man with brown hair and like piercing black or blue eyes who wears this purple robe with a, a sash across it. When God shows you something concerning Jesus, he's going to use your understanding. He's not going to show you someone who has dreadlocks unless that's the way you see Jesus as a dread. So God will use what you know, things that are familiar to you to help you understand what he's trying to tell you. The second thing here, even surrounding cultural norms, is that we have to be aware of time frames. If God gives someone a dream about a horse and buggy today, it's not going to mean the same thing as someone in the 1800s who had a dream about a horse and buggy. A horse and buggy means something different today than what it meant back in the 1800s. So we have to keep those things in mind as we're going through the process of dream interpretation. Most dreams are in parables. Now God speaks in metaphors, similes, allegories. He does this again because he wants to draw us into that place of relying on him, of coming to him for the interpretation, of fellowshipping with him and spending that time in communion, in koinonia with him as one. One such example of an allegory that God uses in the Bible is he says, I am the door. Now, when we think of door, it's a piece of material. Your front door is made of a piece of material. Your car door is made of a piece of material. Jesus is a man, so how could he be an actual door? But he is a door. He's trying to show you that he is the way. So in your dreams, he'll speak in that type of language also. He'll use those allegories, those parables, those metaphors, those similes. He'll use idioms. Now, idioms are things that are like sayings, like you're a chip off the old block but it has to be something that you're familiar with. So if I know that this is an idiom that we use here in the United States, chip off the old block, it may not be an idiom that's used in someone else's country. So God may be showing them an idiom that I don't understand. So I may mess up with the wrong interpretation. And that goes back to why you are the best person to interpret your dreams or why you're the best person to know, yes, this is on point. If someone gives you a dream interpretation, you're the best person to know or not. The idioms can be quite funny. You know, God has a, a personality. I'll give you an example of a dream he once gave me with an idiom. I dreamt that I was in my mom's backyard, my parents' backyard, and there was a really high horse, a very tall, tall horse there. I climbed on top of that horse and I almost fell off. Can you guess what God was trying to tell me? <laughs> Have you ever heard the saying that you're up on your high horse? Well, God was trying to show me, beloved, that there was an area of my life that I was prideful in. And if I was not careful, I was going to fall off. Now, the dream took place in the backyard because backyard means something hidden, not the front yard that is exposed that everyone could see it, but something in the background. And it happened at my parents' home because it was something that stemmed from childhood. So God will use those type of idioms to show you something, to speak to you about. And you just have to journey beyond what you see. Like if I were to just look at that and say, oh, a tall horse, that doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna fall off my horse. Like, I, I just don't get it. You have to think about other things. You have to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me here? And be open to him speaking to you through idioms. All right, beloved. So moving on, God will also um, do in your dreams. He'll also speak to you in dreams with a play on words. As an example, 
if he's trying to tell you that you already know something, he may show you like a no, like you know, you know, or you know. You asked me about something last night, I gave you a dream, show you that you know, you know something. Now, one of my uh, favorite play on words that I've heard is one that John Paul Jackson taught about God giving him a dream. In this dream, John Paul Jackson said that God gave him a dream about being pregnant. He was pregnant. He said when he woke up, it still felt like he was pregnant, had just delivered a baby. But in the dream, he was pregnant and they had to give him a C-section and cut him open. And then he had this baby that he delivered by way of a C-section. God was doing a play on words, showing John Paul Jackson that he was pregnant with something that was going to birth young seers. He had a C-section, a C-section because God was birthing young seers, like S-E-E-R, seers through his ministry. Now, that's a play on words. It's, it's a funny one that I relate to because I am one of those who God used to who God was using him to impart into. So God will use a play on words through your dreams. Now in the understanding of dreams, the most important thing to get you to an understanding of dreams is going to be to build a relationship with God. I've learned, I've experienced that the closer I am with God, the more he shows me. Now I've said this previously that from the time I was three years old, that's as far back as I can remember, I've had dreams. I've been able to see in the supernatural realm. So I do have a gift of seeing and God tells us that the gifts of God come without repentance. So even if you don't serve God with the gifts that he's given you, he's not going to take them back. I can still have dreams. I can still see when the Lord allows me to in the spiritual realm. But because I've cultivated my relationship with God, because I continue to work on my intimacy with God, he shows me more because I continue to stay in that place of intimacy with him he speaks to me a little more clearly I get a lot of visions a lot of my dreams that I get I just wake up knowing what they mean I don't have to go through a process of figuring it out and connecting the dots now that's not to say that every single dream is like that but a lot of my dreams are that way because I've cultivated that relationship with the Lord and I continue to keep that fire burning on the altar so as you journey deeper with the Lord, as you spend more time with him, as you spend more time in prayer, as you spend more time seeking him and reading his word, that's building your relationship with him so that he'll begin to deposit more understanding into you and to give you more dreams and more revelation. So build your relationship with Jesus and you'll see something transition. Let's take a look at the word of God here to hear a little bit more about that. Matthew 13, 34 says this, Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So as we read throughout the New Testament, as we read in the gospels, we see where Jesus is constantly talking to the people in parables, including his own disciples. So it says here that he spoke everything to them in a parable, but then in John 16, 25, it says this, though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father. And that's Jesus speaking in this passage. He's telling them that though I've been speaking to you figuratively and in parables, there's coming a time when I'm going to speak to you clearly. I'm going to tell you clearly about my father. And we read on in John 15, 15, it says this, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. He's calling you a friend. You get to be the Lord's friend when you build your relationship with him, when you stay in that place of the secret place. I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father. I have made known to you. So closeness with God is going to help you to develop spiritually, but it's also going to be in that place where people are, where God will tell you things. Now think about this even from a people standpoint. When you're close to someone, whether it's a romantic relationship or a platonic relationship, when you're close to someone, 
then they feel like they're in a, a special place with you. They feel like they're in a safe place. So they're going to be more open with you. They're going to be more intimate with you. They're going to share things with you that they may not share with anyone else, that they may not share with the majority of people because they're close to you. They know that you care for them and they care for you. It's the same with God. He loves us all, but he treats us differently according to the way that we are with him. If you show him that you love him and you want to hear from him, like why tell someone something if they're not even interested, if they don't even want to know, if they don't even spend time with you? I know you're interested. I know you want to know. So develop that relationship with Jesus and let him speak to you. Next, study your relationship with God. I cannot say this enough. I had a mentor who once told me, study your gift. Now that you know the gift that God has given you, study it so that you can know how it operates. Dreams is a gift that God has given me, so I study dreams. But more importantly than studying dreams, I study the way that God speaks to me in dreams. So you want to study your relationship with God to understand, okay, when he says this, this means this. When I feel like this in my belly, I know that this means this. When the Holy Spirit does this, this means this. When I see this, I know that God is talking to me about this. So you want to study your relationship and you study by being in their presence. You study by making those things important. Dreams are important to me. So I study my dreams. When God gives me something, I write it down. When God tells me something, I think upon it. When I read the word, I read and I look at dreams. When I read the word, I ask, why did God say this and not that? Why is this here? Like, what is God saying here? What patterns are here? So study your relationship with God to understand how he speaks to you, how he deals with you, because the way he speaks to you and deals with you is not going to be the same as maybe someone else. Study your relationship with God. Ask God for the interpretation. That's pretty obvious, but some people don't. They just get up and they try to figure out the dream they had last night without even inquiring of God, without even making the Holy Spirit a part of the fraction. So ask God for the interpretation because again, he is the one that gives it to you if you're receiving a gift from God. Even if you're receiving, a, a, not a gift, but a dream, he's the one that gives it to you. But even if you're receiving a dream from your soul, still ask God what it's about if you don't understand because God knows everything. Ask God, God, is this a, a dream from you? When I release prophetic words, I always like to do a little teaching with it to tell people that it's their responsibility to go to God, to ask God, Lord, is this a dream from you or, or a vision from you or a prophetic word from you that this person is speaking? And if God says yes, then move on to, okay, God, is it for me? And if God says yes, then move on to, okay, God, is it for now? And if God says yes, then move on to God, how do I respond to this? It's the same thing with dreams. You need to ask God if you're not sure, what is the source of this dream? Was it from you? Was it from my soul? Was it from the devil? And then go on to ask him those follow-up questions, like truly inquire of the Lord. He loves it when you do that because it shows that you're depending on him. Next is to study the parables of Jesus. I love the whole Bible cover to cover. There are some things in the Old Testament that come up regularly in dreams but there are some things in the new testament that you will see not only in uh, dreams but you'll see in the world as god speaks to you so study the parables of jesus to understand those parables like when jesus said this the kingdom of god is like this a man did this and this also study the things that he said to people when the woman who had the daughter, I believe it was a daughter who was demon possessed, who needed deliverance, she went to Jesus and Jesus said to her that uh, the bread, basically the food, is reserved for God's people and not for dogs. What did Jesus mean by that? Was he trying to insult the woman? So study those kinds of things. He wasn't trying to insult the woman at all. There was a message in there a message that will show up in your dreams if you understand. A dog can mean an unbeliever. A dog can also mean a friend. For me, a dog wouldn't be my friend because I don't like 
dogs. I don't like dogs whatsoever. So for me, God wouldn't use a dog to symbolize a friend or an unbeliever because he knows the way that I feel about dogs. But just study them to see what God is saying about this and this, and then you can go back and kind of uh, put it down somewhere and understand the way that God speaks. He speaks about a lion, which has two meanings. A lion can mean Jesus, but a lion can also mean the enemy because in the scripture, it says that the devil goes about as a roaring lion. And usually with symbolism, there could be a negative symbol for something or a positive symbol. So I keep going back to this. You have to have that relationship with the Lord. You have to have the discernment from the Holy Spirit and the partnering with the Holy Spirit to know what God is truly telling you. So study dreams and visions and their interpretation and the principles of them from the Bible. Now look for patterns in your dream. When you look for patterns, what you want to do with them is to build your own dream catalog or dream dictionary. What I mean by that is I've watched all the dreams that God has given me over the years that I can remember. Someone who is often in my dreams is my father, whether it's my natural father or my spiritual father. They're in my dreams a lot. And also Sid Roth. <laughs> Sid Roth shows up in my dreams a lot. And then my, uh, my prophetic teacher, my prophetic mentor who's over me, uh, my spiritual, my prophetic spiritual father. I have a couple of spiritual fathers, but my prophetic spiritual father who is a prophet who mentors me in the prophetic. He's in my dreams constantly. So I've studied those patterns to understand what God was speaking to me in the past. So I'll know what he will be speaking to me in the future when that dream shows up. As an example, God often uses my father to represent himself. He'll use my spiritual father and my pastor as well to represent himself. But I have to study, to know, to understand, and to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, whether he's speaking to me about my pastor as himself, my spiritual father as himself, my natural father as himself, or if he's speaking to me about a particular position, or if he's speaking to me about them representing God. So study those patterns, understand. When God shows me also me being back at an old job, it, in the beginning, it represented a spirit of delay that I had to attack with the blood of Jesus. But after that, it has represented me going back to an old way of thinking, or an old way of being, an old habit. So study what God gives you in a dream so that you can build your own dream catalog to understand what God is trying to say to you when those recurring dreams show up. Okay, now multiple dreams. If you have multiple dreams in the same night, the majority of the time, it's going to be the same message that God is trying to convey to you. We see this with the dream of Pharaoh, the first dream, and then the second dream that he had. It's the same message that God was trying to convey. In the book of Genesis, I want to say it's Genesis 41. We saw where the first dream that Pharaoh had, it was about, um, I don't know if it was the cows or the, the, the grains of corn that came first, but in one of the dreams, he saw seven cows let's go with the cows first they came up and they were fat they were by the nile and they were fat and then he saw again another seven cows that came up and they were skinny strawny and those skinny strawny cows ate up the fat cows then with the second dream that he had again i can't remember the order but he saw heads of grain where in the that first part of the dream the heads of grain that came up where they were big, they were bulky, they were beautiful. And then right afterwards, seven more heads of grain came up and they were strawny, they were ugly, they were dried up, they were bruised. And those bad heads of grain came and they ate up the healthy, beautiful heads of grain. Now, there were two dreams, one about cows, one about heads of grain, but God was saying the same thing in both dreams. And if you know your Bible, you know the interpretation that God was showing Pharaoh what was going to happen over the next 14 years in Egypt. There was going to be seven years of plenty. The cows, I believe, represented like meat uh, or meat in the form of provision. And then the grain represented literal grain and, and bread. So it was their provision, their, their wealth. It was going to be good for seven years, but then it was going to be the opposite, the seven years following it. So the two dreams were one and the same. So if you have a dream and you wake up 
out of that dream. And then you go right back to sleep and you dream another dream which has another message in it. Most of the time, God is speaking to you about the same thing. When you dream them like that, it's a confirmation. When you get two dreams with the same message, it's a confirmation that the matter is decided it's going to happen or it's currently happening. If you have reoccurring dreams, whether they're from God, your soul, or the devil, it means that you're not understanding something that's going on. Having two dreams is different from having a reoccurring dream. A reoccurring dream would be something that you dream maybe on Monday, then Tuesday you dream it again, or next Friday you dream it again, but it's a reoccurring dream. Not that you're dreaming something on the same night, but the dream keeps reoccurring. It means that you're not understanding something. Once you understand it or once you deal with it, that dream usually goes away. Now, reoccurring dreams, again, they can come from God. If it comes from God, twice usually means, again, if it's on the same night, that um, this is what's going to happen. It's a confirmation. But if it's a reoccurring dream, a real reoccurring dream, where it's on different nights, God is trying to tell you that he's speaking to you, but you don't understand. Or he's speaking to you, but you're not ready to understand the meaning. Like myself, when I had the reoccurring dream about the person I was considering marrying coming to get me, but the floor of my bedroom was not clean, so I had to go and straighten it out before that person got in, before I let open the door to them. I wasn't ready. I wasn't understanding what God was trying to tell me. So those reoccurring dreams mean that you haven't grasped something yet. You can also have reoccurring dreams from your soul. I've had reoccurring dreams from my soul about being sad while, while I was back in an old workplace. That was my soul just letting me know that there was an issue there in the old workplace, something that happened that I hadn't dealt with or an issue with my old mindset that I hadn't dealt with yet. So once I dealt with it, the dream went away. Now it will come back again if I end up back at the same place where I'm stuck in the mindset that God wants to get me out of with the past mindset, the past way of thinking, the past way of doing. And with reoccurring dreams from the devil, it's a form of intimidation. It's a form of trying to put fear in you. I had this situation once going on in my life where I had to seek God's deliverance for. And God delivered me from this thing, but the enemy wanted to come back to open up that thing in my life. So he would give me a dream about that thing on a reoccurring basis to make me think that number one, that I hadn't received my deliverance and number two, to try to scare me and number three, to try to open a door of fear again so that that thing could come back in my life. So reoccurring dreams means that we're not dealing with it. We don't understand it. We haven't grasped it yet. So as soon as you deal with it, it will go away. All right, so let's get down to the actual interpretation. Now with the interpretation, beloved, don't focus on every single detail. I wanna go back to something I said last week. If your dream is all over the place, you're running here and running there, and this happened and that happened, and shifting scenes like 50 times, usually that's not a dream from God. I have yet to see one. So if I get a dream where it's all over the place, I personally just dismiss it because there's no point to it. There's no message in it. If someone tells me a dream and there's no actual message in it, I tell them to speak to God about it, but I would just dismiss it because there's no message. It's just a bunch of stuff. And it's probably just your soul trying to flush out some activity from the day, something that you saw, or just something that goes on. I have dreams all the time where my soul is just flushing things out. I know that there's no meaning behind it. There's no purpose behind it. It's just my soul flushing things out as I sleep. So you wanna make sure that your dreams are short and they have a message before you start saying, okay, this is a dream from God. So, and putting too much energy into it, but don't focus too much on the details. So details are important, but if there are more than say three or four details, then I would really check it because it may not be a dream from God, or you may be putting too much focus onto a detail that doesn't really matter. All right. So what happens is when you focus on too many details and you lose what God is trying to say, you lose focus of the main message, the main idea, the main storyline of the dream. What you wanna do is identify what or who is the focus of your dream. Were you the focus? Were you actually doing something in a dream? If so, were you doing it alone? 
If not, were you doing it with someone else or with a group of people? Were you watching? If I'm doing something in a dream or doing it with someone, I know that if I'm the one who's doing it, I'm the focus. If there are other people involved in doing it with me, I know that it's a dual effort, so I'm the focus, but there's also a sub-focus. If I'm watching, usually when God gives me prophetic dreams, I'm just watching. It's like a movie screen just drops down and I'm watching what happens. I know that I'm not the focus. God is just giving me a prophetic revelation. So you want to determine the focus. Is the dream about you? Is it about someone else? Are you doing something with the someone else? So determine the focus so that you can move on to the next thing. Are you watching or are you, are you observing? Next, you want to give the dream a title. Now you give the dream a title by determining what is the big idea of the dream? What is the main idea? Like what is the main theme of the dream? Like if I were just to jot something down really quick, if I don't have time to write down every single thing that happened in the dream, I would just write down this. What is the title? As an example, the dream where I almost fell off of that high horse. It was me being on a, a high horse and almost fell. So that would be the title, almost falling off of a high horse. So that was the main idea. So you want to zero in on what the main idea is and give your dream a title. And then you want to look at, was there anything that stand out, that stood out to you? Like with the dream with the high horse, what stood out was that the horse was high. You may have a dream and you see your nose just magnified. It is a hundred times the size that it normally is. God's not trying to tell you that you have a big nose. He may be trying to tell you that you're too nosy. <laughs> or he may be trying to tell you that you know something. Or he may be trying to tell you that he's increasing your discernment. So look for anything that stood out to you. I once had a dream where I was boarding um, a, a vehicle all right, so I'm going to leave that dream out. The Holy Spirit is telling me to, so I'm going to leave that dream out. But look for anything that stands out to you in a dream, something out of the norm. And then you want to look at the action. What's happening in the dream? In my dream with the high horse, the action was that I was climbing on top of the high horse and almost fell off. That was the action. So you've got the action. Then you want to look at the details. Are there any colors in the dream that stand out to you? Are there any numbers? Are there any symbols that you need to be aware of? Again, not a million, because God's not going to give you a million symbols and a million details in a dream, but look at the main ones. I once had a dream that I was getting on a jet blue airplane. I know for me, what the Lord was showing me was that he was taking me somewhere new in the prophetic because revelation represent revelation is represented to me by blue. It's something prophetic. It's something spiritual. So look at the details that stand out. But again, they're not going to be 50 million details. They're going to be few. Usually if there's more than I would say three or four details, then you're probably looking at too many details. Next, look at your mood. Like, how are you feeling? How do you feel when you wake up? I spoke last week about when you get dreams from the devil, they can be darker, they can be deceiving. When you get dreams from God, they can be dark also. It may seem like something that's scary, something that is going to frighten you, something that's not good. But how do you feel when you wake up? When it's a dream from God, even though it's a scary dream, you should wake up feeling like, okay, I'm going to attack this thing in prayer now. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus Christ against it. But when it's from the devil, you oftentimes wake up shaking. You're in fear. Your mind can't stop thinking about it. It's haunting you from a negative standpoint. You can get some dreams from God that really do terrify you, but not to the point where you're stuck in fear. It's to the, the point where you're terrified, where you want to get down on your knees and, and pray to God and seek God. Now, the devil will deceive you with positive dreams or dreams that appear to be positive. You may be kissing someone. You may be marrying someone. And it's because you want to, but that's not the person that God has for you. But when you wake up, if you're honest with yourself, 
there will be something in you that feels like, oh, even though I enjoyed this, mm, there's something that's a little off. So you want to look at your mood. How do you feel? I know for myself, whenever someone is going to die, I feel a deep sorrow in my dreams. It's so deep that I cry and it feels like a cry from my soul. I literally feel that cry. When I wake up, I feel the same thing. Like there's such a, a deep a soul uh, remorse. I just, I feel that, that, that hurt. I feel that pain in my soul when I wake up. Those dreams, I know that God is speaking to me, that someone, it's already decided, they're already going to die. I'm just letting you know. I also have dreams where I can, this is kind of hard to explain and I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail here. This is more for my prophetic course. But I have had dreams where I feel the time passing by. Like the dream that I had concerning COVID-19, I felt the nine years that had passed by that we were dealing with this thing. I felt the time pass by in the dream. All right, that's something and somewhere that I shouldn't have gone for this program. But what helps also is hearing a dream. Often when you hear a dream and hear that dream interpreted correctly, that sparks something within your own spirit to also be able to interpret your own dreams. So let's listen to some dreams today. I want to read to you Genesis 40, the dream here starting in verse 9 about the cupbearer and Joseph's interpretation. It says this, Genesis 40 verse 9. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, in my dream, I saw a vine in front of me and on the vine, there were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, hand gives you access, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put his cup in his hand. So this is a very short dream. This is a good example of what dreams from God generally look like. And then now we're going to go into Joseph's interpretation. He says this in Genesis 40 verse 12. This is what it means, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand just as you used to when you were his cupbearer. As you listen to dreams being interpreted as you read the scriptures and see the dreams being interpreted the symbolism there the three days are really the three branches the hand gives you access you're putting the cup back into pharaoh's hand as you hear these interpretations correctly interpreted by the holy spirit it sparks something in you to ignite your own ability given to you by the holy spirit to partner with him to be able to interpret your own dreams i'm now going to share a dream with you which god gave me in the early part of 2019 concerning the 2020 u.s election when I first got this dream, I didn't quite understand it. I understood the general idea, but I didn't understand the specifics until a little bit later on. And then exactly what the Lord spoke to me about has come to pass here in the USA. The dream was this, beloved. I dreamt that I was at the airport on a tarmac and I was watching a plane. So I was watching, I was not participating, I was watching. So I saw this plane at the airport on the tarmac. It was a, an American airline plane, clearly labeled. The plane was on the left side of the tarmac and it was in position, but then I saw a pilot in the plane. He was the only one in the plane that I could see. I saw the pilot say, we're not on the right side for takeoff. So that pilot strategically drove the plane from the left side over to the right side and then came around in front on the right side and said, now we're in position to take off. And the pilot strategically lifted up so smooth. It was so smooth and the plane lifted up and took off. So if I were to use the principles that I gave you to break this down, 
they would be this. First of all, it was a very short dream. There wasn't a change of scenery from here to there and there to here. So it was one short dream. There was a clear message behind it. So if I were to look at the focus of this dream, the focus is a plane. If I go on next to the big idea, the big idea is that there's a plane that shifts from the left side to the right side and then takes off. That's the big idea. The action is that a plane is changing. It's moving from one side to the next and then it takes off. So the action and the big idea are pretty much the same here. The details and the symbols. The details are there was an American airline plane, not any other plane, not a plane that wasn't labeled, but an American airline plane. Another detail was the sides. The plane was first on the left side and it moved over to the right side. So another detail there, the left side means something, the right side means something. But in this particular dream, they meant something other than what I'm accustomed to understanding. And most of my dreams, if I see something on the right side, it means something that I can do naturally, something that maybe I was born to do. And then something on the left side means something that I am gifted to do a calling or of some sort. But in this particular dream, that application did not apply because it wasn't about me and God wasn't speaking to me about what I was going to do naturally or uh, what he was going to empower me spiritually to do. God was actually showing me sides meaning sides. And this is the interpretation of the dreams, which I'll go over what the sides mean also. God was revealing to me what was going to happen in the 2020 U.S. election. The U.S., uh, the American airline plane represented the United States of America. I know this because if the Lord is speaking to me about the nation of Israel, he'll show me the El Al airplane, which is the Israeli airplane. So the American airline airplane represented the USA. The plane shifting from the left side to the right side represented the control or the presidency shifting from the left side being the Republican side over to the right side being the Democratic side. And then the plane took off, meaning that it was going to happen. So God was showing me that there was going to be a change of power, a change of president in the United States. It was going to go from a Republican president to a Democratic president. God did not reveal this to me right away, but he gave me that dream in 2019, so I had ample time to seek him. As I sought God, he later revealed to me before the election that this was in fact about the 2020 US election. So beloved, I share that dream with you because I wanted you to hear the dream and hear the interpretation in hopes that it would inspire inspire something in you, ignite something in you to connect with the Holy Spirit to be able to interpret your own dreams. Now I want to share a few more dreams that I've had from God with you briefly. The first is I once was laid off from my job many, many years ago, and I knew that I did not want to go back into the same industry that I've been laid off from. It was the hotel and uh, travel industry. It was the first place where I took a job as an adult. So I was there for a while and knew that I didn't want to go back into that. So I thought that I would get a job in the area that I studied. Imagine that I'm going to get a job <laughs> working in the area that I actually studied. At the time, my undergrad degree was in law. So I pursued a job in a law firm. And when I went for the job, they offered me the job almost immediately, but I wasn't quite sure if that's really where I wanted to be, if that was what God had for me. So I went home that night and I prayed about the job after they gave me the offer and God gave me a dream. I saw myself working at the law firm, but I had on this red coat that came all the way down to past my knees and I was burning up in that office. It was so hot in there. I was hot in the coat and the environment was hot and I was just fanning myself. And no matter how I fanned myself, I could not feel cool. I was just burning up in that place. What God was speaking to me 
was that if I took that job, I was going to be so uncomfortable there. I would be hot in terms of feeling uncomfortable and out of place and maybe even interacting with some things that were not positive and going through some stressful things. So I declined that, uh, that job offer knowing that God was speaking to me about how things would be if I took that job. Now, one of the greatest things that I can rejoice over is that when I called and spoke with the Director of Human Resources to decline that job after I got that dream from the Lord, the Lord opened up her mouth and that woman uh, began to speak to me. And she said, you made a great decision. This is not a good place to work. I handed in my resignation today. So that was the Lord protecting me. What's key about that dream is normally the color red represents wisdom to me. Like I once had a dream where God came and painted my front door. He sent some people to come and paint my front door red. And I knew that God was giving me more wisdom into some public things that I've been involved in. But in this particular dream that I had about being in that law firm and having on a red coat, that red coat did not represent wisdom. No. It represented discomfort and anguish. So that's going back to some things that I said previously that sometimes a symbol may mean something in this dream, but that same symbol or that same color or that same number may represent something completely different in another dream. All right, so let's move on to another dream concerning a job. Uh, there was one time when I was, this was the same time actually, I was looking and searching for where God wanted me to be in terms of work and I kept dreaming of being in these medical places with white beds and sheets all over them and different beds all over the place and they were all covered in white. It kind of freaked me out. It was a reoccurring dream. It freaked me out. I didn't know why I kept seeing these beds. They were, as an example, I had one dream where I was at the dentist office and there were like 50 beds and they were all covered with white sheets and white pillows and white pillowcases. And then I was at another doctor's office and saw the same thing. Then I was at a hospital and I saw the same thing, all of these beds, and it was just freaking me out. What God was showing me was that he was sending me to work at a hospital and there was a position that opened in a hospital. Now, if you know me personally, you know that I, I don't enjoy hospitals. I hated them back then. I hated everything about the medical community. It just wasn't for me. It creeped me out. God opened a position for me to work in a hospital. I slid right in there. It was a part of my process, but that's what God was showing me, that he was taking me to a place with uh, hospital beds. He was taking me to work in the medical community. Now I had another dream where I worked at a university and at the time, very recently, actually over the last five years or so, there was a university that had recruited me to be a part of their faculty. And I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to work with them, wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to do that. But I brought it to God, I prayed about it, and God gave me a dream of starting my first day at the university and being so happy working there as a part of the faculty. And I knew that God was saying to me that that was a blessing that he was giving me. And sure enough, I had accepted that faculty role at the university and it was the most amazing company ever. Uh, just great experiences. Another dream. I was at one point considering in my 20s buying a condominium. Well, I went with my realtor to go and take a look at the condominium and it seemed okay. The realtor wasn't too keen on it, but it seemed okay to me. So I went back home. I took it before the Lord. I prayed about it. And when I prayed about it that same night, God gave me a dream of the condominium unit that I was considering purchasing with a big, fat, ugly coffin in it. So I knew God was telling me to put that thing to death, close the door on that because that was not where he wanted me. Well, fast forward some time later and I was getting ready to purchase a home and uh, there were two potential homes that I was considering buying and God gave me a dream about uh, one home and the other and he showed me where I didn't get the one home because that's not where he wanted me, whereas another door would open. So God showed me which home to pick. Then fast forward again, I had another dream recently. I have recently bought this home that I'm in now. And there was a home which my realtor had shown me and I told her that I was not interested in the home because it wasn't my style. It just, it wasn't anything that I was looking for. So even though I had already told the realtor no, 
she still wanted me to pursue the home. So I remember one morning being at home and I fell asleep on my couch. It was about 8.30 in the morning, I fell asleep. And I had a dream about this white house, this big shiny white house that I had recently purchased. And when I went into the home, I realized that I had purchased a home without seeing it. But when I actually got inside the home, there were nothing but demonic spirits all over. Every room that I walked in had demonic spirits and like people that had mental disorders, people that had bipolar uh, disorders and all types of other disorders. And when I tried to get out of it, I couldn't. I tried to call the realtor, she wouldn't pick up the phone. I tried to file a lawsuit to get my money back, nothing worked out and I was stuck with the home. So right after I woke up out of that dream, about five minutes later, my realtor called me and she said, hey, you remember that house that I was telling you about yesterday and, and you said no to it? I said, yes, I do. She said, well, my partner and I, her realtor partner, we're going to buy the home and we're gonna fix it up with all the things that you like. I know what you like. I know you like the marble floor, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna put marble all over it and blah, blah, blah. And we're going to give it to you since the market is like this and it's hard to, to, um, to get the home that you want in the market because there's so many people bidding and there are these bidding wars. I knew right then and there that God had spoken to me in that dream I just had and it was absolutely a no. It was a no before and it was a no then. So I shared uh, the fact that God spoke to me and he said no, I didn't share the details, but I just told her God said no and I'm telling you no. About, I don't know, maybe six weeks later after they purchased a home and, and fixed it up and were going through that process, she came to me and she told me that they found out that the person who owned the home had committed suicide in the home and there was some type of murder or something surrounding the home or, or whatever. So I was just rejoicing because there was God again showing up. And then when this home opened up, um, it was just so many miraculous things. I just don't have enough time to, to tell you everything, but God spoke to me about everything concerning the home from the delay that we would have, the thing that would hold up the closing. He showed me that it was going to be him that would do that for the right reasons. And it's just been a beautiful experience. So I'm sharing these things with you because I want to hopefully inspire something in you, to ignite something in you, to get in that secret place with God where he begins to speak to you about your life through dreams and through the word and through every other avenue and to get you to a place where you don't take your dreams for granted because God cares about every single avenue, every single aspect of your life. So once you get these dreams from God now and, and you're in that secret place with him and he starts explaining things to you, what do you do? Like, how do you respond? Well, expect for God to speak to you in dreams, number one, because he said so. He said so in Acts 2.17. He said so. He said so to you in Joel 2.28. So expect it. And then record your dream immediately after you wake up your mind is great <laughs> you may have a photogenic memory but you're not always going to remember everything even though i said that when you get dreams from god especially calling dreams you never forget them there may be details that you do forget so you want to record your dream as soon as you wake up I get so many dreams now, I no longer record my dreams just with pen and paper. I have my phone, so when I get up in the mornings, I just open my notebook on my phone and I do a voice memo and, uh, and it's there. And then I go back and I look at them periodically to see what God was showing to me at different times and, and just rejoice when I see the manifestation. So record them and of course you wanna pray. You wanna pray to God to ask him, what the dream means, what you should do with the dream. You wanna just get in that secret place with the Lord and just communicate with him about the dream. And you also wanna call forth anything that needs to be called forth in the dream. If it's something that God is showing you about your future or about something, call it forth. If it's something that needs to be canceled, something from your soul, something from the enemy, even something where God is showing you the hand of the enemy, cancel what needs to be canceled. So call forth those good things from God, cancel those negative things that need to be canceled. And then you want to understand like how to apply them. Like is God showing you a dream? If it's something great, is he showing it to you because it's something that's going to happen immediately and you need to prepare for it? Is it something that's going to be a month from now, a year from now? Like understand by asking God, like what is the time frame? Like what exactly do you need to do with it? It may be a, a dream. 
for the future and you just put it on the shelf for right now and know that you need to do something with it in the future. Now, if I haven't said this already, not every dream is meant to be interpreted. If I am repeating myself, please forgive me. I've been going on for a bit and have had a couple of distractions, but not every dream is meant to be interpreted. So allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Don't get frustrated if you don't get the interpretation right away or if you never get it. Again, the reason for these dreams is to be in communion with God so that he can have another modality in which he speaks to you. Also remember this, beloved, not every dream is meant to be shared. Some dreams are meant to be kept strictly between you and God. Depending on what your role is in the body of Christ, in the world, God may reveal some things to you that he hasn't revealed to other people or won't reveal to other people because it's not their assignment. I operate prophetically, so God will often give me dreams for the nations. God gives me dreams a lot of times for the organizations that I'm a part of. If something's going on in a workplace, he'll show it to me sometimes. I get a lot of dreams about my church, things that are going on in my church or things that God wants to do in my church. But it's not for me to run and blab to the CEO of an organization or to run and blab and tell the congregants of the church that I go to or even my pastor. It's for me to steward that, to incubate it with God and do what God is telling me, to pray over it, to stand in the gap, to be a steward, to help to birth those things that God wants to do. If it's a personal dream that God has given you about your life, remember the story of Joseph. Not every dream is meant to be shared with people. And if God wants you to share it, perhaps it may be at a later time. God may tell you to share it with an individual who can help you with the interpretation. So be very mindful of that, that the majority of your dreams really aren't meant to be shared with, with other people. It's meant for you to incubate with the Lord. It's meant for you to um, commune with the Lord concerning it. So I think that's all <laughs> I'm going to say for today concerning this. Oh, beloved, I have so enjoyed myself. My mouth is dry and, and everything else, but I have so enjoyed myself and I hope you've enjoyed this too. As we're wrapping up here, I want to offer you some products that I feel can help you on your journey. The first is going to be my book here. I shared this last week, The Sound of God, My Sheep Hear My Voice. This is a book that's going to help you to start hearing the voice of God for yourself. I go deeper into dreams here, a lot of things that I couldn't cover here today. You see, I've been talking for over an hour and still didn't even scratch the surface. Didn't get into a lot of scripture here today, but there's more here in this book. This is also going to help you to develop your listening ear and your seeing eye to be able to understand how God speaks in other ways and cultivate that gift in you. I also have here my companion book, uh, You Shall Receive Power, Supernatural Tongues. This is going to get you activated in speaking in tongues if you're not already activated, as well as help you to develop in tongues. It's not just about being able to, it's about what you do with it. It's about growing in the gift. It's about actually seeing power, having your prayers answered, expressing what God wants you to express and legislating what God wants you to legislate here in the earth. So I've got these two books for you. You can grab them on Amazon. And I also want to recommend this book here to you. It's called Dream Elements by John E. Thomas. This is probably the best book that I have in my dream reservoir for dream elements. It is from Streams Ministry, which was the ministry that John Paul Jackson founded. And it goes over some dream principles from the Bible, as well as some patterns that they've seen, that they've tried and applied to different things. It really encompasses over 30 years or more than that, actually, of um, just working with dreams. So I want to recommend this to you. I, it may be on Amazon. It may also be directly at the Streams Ministries website, but this is great one that I highly recommend to put in your library of dreams. All right, beloved. So I'm going to pray over you today. And if there's anything additional that the Lord wants to say, I will release it to you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this time today. I thank you for 
your children watching. I thank you for my brother and for my sister, oh Lord God. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are a supernatural God. I thank you that you're speaking, God. I thank you that you're speaking to your children all the time. They desire to hear your voice, oh God. Lord, I ask you today to release more of your Holy Spirit upon your children. Yes, Lord. Your word says, God, in Proverbs 25, 2, that it's the glory of you, God, to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search out that matter. Help your children, my brothers and my sisters watching, to search out those matters which you have concealed through their dreams. Draw them closer to you, O oh God. Release more of your Holy Spirit on them, O oh God. Bring them into that place of intimacy, in that place of fellowship, into that place of inquiry with you so that they may understand exactly what it is you are speaking to them, how you speak to them and respond to it, Father. Bring them into a place of deeper intimacy with you. Bring them into a place of oneness with you, Jesus, into a place of abiding with you so that you may be one. Oh, Father. I thank you for even that woman watching me who's going through just a terrible season of nightmares and, and just not knowing what to do about it, Lord. I just, I thank you for that woman. And I don't know who this is, who this is for, but I just see spiritually that there's a woman watching me and you've been battling with nightmares and you just don't know what to do about it. You've prayed to God about it. You've talked to other people about it, but nothing seems to be happening. What is actually happening and I'm getting a name, maybe a Linda. What is actually happening, Linda, is that the devil is trying to bully you. The devil is coming after you through these nightmares because you don't believe that you have the authority to stand up to him. You don't believe that the authority of Jesus Christ is in your hands and in your tongue to be able to put him under your feet. Now, once you stand in your place of authority and keep standing, the devil will flee. It may not happen in one night or two nights or even a week, but once he sees that you really mean business, you understand your authority and that you're going to stand on it and you're going to resist him with the blood of Jesus Christ by telling him that he cannot, no, cannot interfere with you. Those nightmares will cease. It's not that you have anything in your home that's contaminated. I just see you going all throughout your home, just searching for things. And you did get rid of some things, and that's great, some things that you needed to. But now it's just a point of the enemy trying to bully you, trying to intimidate you, trying to keep you in that place of fear and worry and thinking that God's not answering you. So use the blood of Jesus, put on the armor of Jesus Christ, and put that nasty devil under your feet and out of your house in Jesus' name. All right, so beloved, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed connecting with you here today. Remember that God loves you. He loves you so very much and he wants to speak with you. He wants to take you deeper and higher with him here today and always. Beloved, I love you. Your father loves you more. Thanks again and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.